Hello there. So I'm making this video because I kind of sort of uh, messed up. I uh, well, I, I I didn't mess up. So, but yeah, no, I sort of did mess up. I uh, I made a video a while back about Google Translate and uh, basically explaining why Google Translate won't take our jobs. You know, and and because as translators, we always I mean, chances are if you're a translator, someone's approached you, someone's told you, be like, oh well, your job, your profession won't exist in a few months because or a few years or whatever it might be because Google Translate is going to take over. Some other form of machine translation is going to take over, and uh, and so you'll be out of a job and so why even get into that job and yeah i've had people even say that one guy was saying his daughter wanted to become a translator and he was saying he's like well i told her not to do that obviously because you know obviously it's not going to exist soon like he's looking at me like it's such an obvious thing and i should agree and anyway so i did this whole long video talking about why i didn't think it was the case but there i was talking about machine translation and how i feel machine translation isn't um, well, it isn't keeping up. It definitely isn't up now, but it won't be able to keep up just because language has so many, you know, different, I mean, it has different forms of, of uh, nuances and metaphors and similes and innuendos and humor and uh, the slang is constantly changing, etc, etc, etc. Anyway, so I addressed all these points, kind of technical points and showed why it works, why it doesn't. But here's a problem. That same guy approaches me next time or someone approaches you and and says oh google translate is going to take over blah blah you don't have the time to go over every single example of why it won't uh translate this expression correctly or that expression correctly and why it's not going to keep up and how the algorithm works differently from people and we uh you know are a lot better at interpreting all these expressions that are a bit off anyway it, it, you know you can you can watch that video and where i talk about it but unfortunately it's very hard to make it concise and make it make it you know something that you can tell someone just there off the cuff or at a party and that's not even the main reason why we don't have to worry about google translate and i should have addressed this main reason because it is something a lot shorter and a lot easier and a lot more evident that usually people don't think about um for why google translate's not going to take over and why i mean and why translators will always be needed and uh and you know and they'll be needed for a long time and so today I wanted to discuss this point uh, because it is a different point, but it's uh, no less important. In fact, many times more if you have to be having to deal with all this uh, objection and having to deal with people, you know, who always bring up this question. So uh, as most of you know, the way Go the Google Translate, you know, and, and all these machine translation, the way the algorithm works is they kind of take examples from what's been around. So say there is, uh, you know, cafe gets translated as coffee, right? And so, but say I misspell coffee and I write it however it was, anyway, I write it incorrectly. And then, um, and you know, so Google Translate sees the incorrect translation when it's parsing all the stuff on on the web. And, uh, and so it has the incorrect one, but then it finds the correct one. And so it, there's two ways to translate cafe, you know, coffee misspelled and coffee spelled correctly. And then it goes through other 50,000 different variations and realizes that's the correct way to spell it, not the incorrect way. And so it knows, you know, to take the correct one and then you know how to translate cafe into coffee. That's how it works. You know, it takes other examples of translations and it figures out, uh, you know, how to translate whatever you write down based on past translations. And that's the problem. Every time you plug a paragraph, a sentence or whatever it might be into Google Translate, Google Google owns that paragraph and uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. The moment you put it in there, it's there. So if you're translating people's confidential stuff, you're translating annual reports, you're translating any legal documents, any contracts or anything that people would rather not be public out there, then uh, you're probably in violation of whatever contract you sign when you're working with them. And, you know, there could be legal recourse because not only is it then available, but it is actually traceable. I mean, this is, and I don't know how to do it, but you know, there is a way to do it. You can, you know, go back to the IP address and, you know, figure out when it was posted from, yeah, which address or what area. And, you know, you can kind of figure it out anyway, but regardless, um, you, uh, you're violating a whole bunch of rules and, uh, and yeah, you're basically putting people's confidential information out there, which you can't be doing. And, you know, that's the thing. Google needs that information in order to take all the other, you know, compare it to all the other translations out there and figure out what's best. It's not that it took everything else out there and whatever you put is going to be kept confidential. No, everything you put there is all 
put into the mix so it can keep improving its translations. And, uh, and so, yeah, then it's out there. And that's, that's a huge issue, you know? Uh, and most of these companies, in fact, if, especially if potential clients or companies come up to you and tell you, well, you know, why we need you? Google Translate is going to be great in a few years or something. You're like, yeah, if you want all your personal company information out there on Google Translate and you should remind them, by the way, if any of your employees right now are putting stuff in Google Translate, uh, you know, be very careful because that means all that information is out there. So, yeah, you know, this is a huge thing. And no matter how good Google Translate's algorithm gets, uh, you don't usually want to share this information and just make it public. So, and you know, this is, I'm thinking all types of, I mean, I think most translations at the end of the day, except marketing, because obviously marketing, you want it to be out there, but anything medical, anything legal, any type of contract, most business and financial stuff. Uh, anyway, yeah, you know, and uh, personal correspondence, stuff like that. Anyway, that's the problem with Google Translate, Bing Translate, Sistran, I got, you know, all these, all these ones that operate out there. Now there are other ones as well. I think I've mentioned before, there's Lingue, there's a context.reverso and stuff like that. And these operate in a similar way, but it's, they're different and safer. Uh, first of all, they only parse it from publicly available documents. If you go to Lingue or anything like that, I do a lot of financial translations and I realize it, it uses a lot of documents published by the EU. And that's why you can link to the original document and the original you know, the original original, the original translation, and you can compare them because these are publicly available documents. At any time you put something in, then you can search for stuff, but it doesn't use whatever you put in as um, as the translate or, you know, as, as a, anyway, it, it doesn't record what you put in. Also, you can't put in whole paragraphs. You can only put in a word at a time or maybe, you know, two words or something like that. Um, so, you, you know, these, these are a lot safer than Google Translate and Bing Translate and all those. I keep signaling out Google just because I assume most people, you know, that's what most people mean. But so anyway, this is a huge reason why Google Translate A isn't safe and B uh, w cannot be used by so many companies out there. And so translators will be needed for a long time to come. So this is probably the best answer to give when people are bothering you at cocktail parties or whatever it is saying, well, you're, you're, it's a dying industry and you won't be needed. That's probably where you should respond. And you can mention that actually it's way behind and it'll take it a long time to get up with the times. But in the meantime, this is also a huge issue, completely different from the ability of the machine translation to keep up. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I just wanted to put it out there because I realized that I hadn't mentioned it in the video, but it, you know, it was something that was in the back of my mind, but it didn't have to deal with machine translation per se. So I didn't even mention it in that video, which I probably should have. Um, so hopefully you can use that as well in your arsenal for people when they uh, tell you that translators have no future or stuff like that. And uh, because to me, that's anyway, such a big obvious point. But uh, yeah, hopefully you can find this useful. If you do, don't forget to click thumbs up because once again, that always helps. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't because that also helps. In fact, after you subscribe, if you click on the bell next to it, then you can get notified every time there's a new video so you don't have to go check and wonder when there's a new video and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye. Okay, just quickly to add something, as you can tell, I'm wearing a different shirt. Uh, this is uh, this is the next day, but uh, before posting this video, I just wanted to add something quickly. Um, you don't always have to feel the need to correct people, by the way. And, uh, and this I've learned uh, myself that when people feel the need to say, oh, there's no future in translation, Google Translate is going to take over and all that, my instant reaction is to want to correct them and tell them all the ways they're wrong. And I guess that's why I made all, you know, these videos about it. But there isn't always a need. Of course, if they're thinking of hiring a translator, then you should set them straight just because A, you know, they're going to make a mess of it if they try to use Google Translate or they'll figure out quick, quickly enough that they shouldn't, uh, but that'll help them along. And B, you know, they might actually hire you. But if this is someone else entirely or they're just saying it out of a conversation, you don't really need to correct them all the time. And, uh, you know, many times it's a lot of effort for, for nothing really. And let's face it, like if it's someone who's thinking maybe of becoming a translator and that's the reason they don't, then quite frankly, I think at least they're, you know, they're kind of getting into it for the wrong reasons or at least they haven't done their research correctly. And, you know, that's one less competitor, I guess. Um, anyway, it's, 
I feel I always have the instinct that I want to correct people whenever they mention, you know, this whole Google Translate machine translation thing. But I've learned over time that you don't always have to. And, you know, sometimes you can smile and nod and be like, oh, well, we'll see or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, but anyway, at least now with these videos, you have the, you know, hopefully the information and a, a, a plausible response to give to people should you wish to give it. But you don't always have to feel the need. I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, and that's it. Now the video's done. Thanks. Bye.